Psalm 23 said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, I, I will fear no evil. Throughout this week is in my shield and my bottle and my hiding place, my strength and my strong tower. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know, this week I could have been in a bad accident at work, but for the grace of God, praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. I'm, I'm sorry for the person that it happened to, but praise God. I'm thanking God it was not me. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. You know, you, we were cooking the dinners, praise the Lord, and you know, the oven is very high. So if you're short, it's sort of difficult for you to take things out. Praise the Lord. So I went in and I took something out, praise the Lord Jesus. And afterwards I went and I sat down and had a break. Not even five minutes into the break, praise God, I heard a big scream. Praise the Lord Jesus, praise God. And lo and behold, we were doing curry, chicken curry that day. And it was in the oven. And the whole thing fell on the girl. Praise the Lord Jesus, burning up the whole of our chest, the whole of our breast, everything. Praise the Lord Jesus, praise God. But you know, God has been good. Praise the Lord Jesus, praise God. You know, we're so, it is a bad burn, but we're thankful it wasn't, she was saying it wasn't her face and everything else. Praise the Lord Jesus, praise the burns that she received. Praise the Lord, praise God. I'm thanking that it wasn't worse than that, praise God. But I was thankful also that I didn't get it. Praise the Lord Jesus, praise God, because it will be, you know, after going through everything, 
to have that again, praise the Lord Jesus. So I'm so thankful, I'm so grateful to God, praise the Lord Jesus, praise the Lord, for protecting me. The saints of God, we just keep on praying, praise the Lord Jesus. Every time you leave your house, pray. Every time, every time I enter into the workplace, I pray. Praise the Lord Jesus. Every time I step in there, I pray, praise God, and ask the Lord for protection, for guidance. Praise God. So saints of God, keep on praying. Let's keep on praying one for the other. Praise God in Jesus' name. As I hand over to our elder, praise God, and sing the song. My, 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 Lord is sweet. My, 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 my.
the garment. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. What a wonder. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless your name, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. If anybody know he's sweet today, just tell him thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. He's God all by himself. You don't need my assistance to make him to be God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Oftentimes I remember the fact that he was God before I got here. And he'll be God long after I'm gone. Because by himself, he is God. And he's sweet so till. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank God for all the testimonies. In Jesus' name, our God is a good God. Praise the Lord Jesus. He's a wonderful God. And it's a blessing to hear the testimonies of his children in the house today. Praise the Lord Jesus. As I listen to testimonies, I remember last week, praise God, it was Tuesday. And the significance as to why it was Tuesday was because I was down the other side of the motorway at work. But I want to get back for Bible class. So I pack my bag and I get up from my desk and I made my way to the exit. And there were people who seemed to want to have a conversation. Mm. Me tell them goodbye. Me gone. Bible class. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I made my way to the car. And I put my bag and my stuff into the vehicle. And as I um, was about to set off, I remembered that I was supposed to do something. I promised Missionary Nalette that I was going to pop to the shop, buy where I work, before I come home. And I said, well, I've left a good plenty of time. So let me pop to the shop real quick and then head home. When I hit the motorway, um, it's about 15 mile stretch on the motorway and I went about 10 miles and the vehicle started to slow down. He said, what is this? He said, by the glass. And the vehicles began to slow down and we went just the next couple of miles took about an hour. About an hour, about 60 minutes to go just a couple of miles. And I was sitting there in the car and I don't know how many times I looked at my watch and checked the time and praise the Lord Jesus began to get a little bit uncomfortable praise the Lord hurry up and come up the wheel praise the Lord Jesus and as I reached to the front of the congestion I saw there were three vehicles into an extremely bad condition the trail and mash up Praise the Lord Jesus. Three vehicles mash up. The first one I saw was a small vehicle and it mash up. The second one was facing the wrong way on the motorway and it mash up. The third one was a bigger vehicle, it was like a, like a van. And this one was mash up until it's on its side instead of on its wheels. I don't know what had happened on the motorway. But something began to remind me as I journeyed down the road that if I hadn't stopped to go to the shop, help me, Jesus. I said, if I hadn't stopped to go to the shop, sometimes we take these things for granted. Praise the Lord Jesus. But they could have been weeping morning tears that day if the Lord hadn't put something in place for me to stop at the shop. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I was so concerned with getting back in time for what I needed to do for Bible class that I hadn't considered things 
until I saw vehicles mash up and on the side and praise be to God and I don't know what happened to the drivers and the passengers but there and then on the road I had to stop and said to not stop driving you know eh? you to keep driving though what an accident but I had to stop my mentality and thinking and say Lord Jesus I thank you Lord Jesus I thank you didn't happen just minutes in front of me. And if it hadn't been for circumstance, I could have been right in the middle of it. But thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, Jesus. According to Psalms 92, the scripture opens and says, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. And again, we give God thanks for all the testimonies in Jesus' name. God has brought us. Help me, Jesus. I said, God has brought us from a mighty long way. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. But this time, praise the Lord Jesus. Again, giving God thanks. Glory, honor, and praise. I'm going to ask the church to stand at this time. I'll ask Evangelist Smith to bless our tithes and offering in Jesus' name. Let us stand and let us bow our heads in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, the church was born in Jesus' name. Turn on God, everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and His fellow. Bless the walks into the place, bless the tide and offering, breathe upon His sanctified Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, see that was your gift unto us in the first place, as we give a bit of you. Bless it and bless it and bless it and bless it, Lord. We own blocks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tell it on the mountain top. Tell it on the city streets. Tell it everywhere you go. Tell it everybody you meet. Tell them Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Yes, he's coming. Let the whole world know that Jesus is coming soon. Tell it on the mountain top. Jesus is coming. 
But I want to encourage you today and let you know that Jesus is coming. Praise the Lord Jesus. Sickness may rock the body, but Jesus is coming. The bills may be high. The financial situation may be critical. But Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Lesson today in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 lets us know that when this earthly tabernacle of this building has been dissolved, we have another building of God. It's not made with hands, but it's eternal in the heavens. Praise the Lord Jesus. I said Jesus is coming. Praise the Lord Jesus. We give God thanks for everything said and done thus far. We offering collected, praise God, and everything, praise God. And if I didn't do so already, let me extend greetings to all those joining us on Zoom. Praise the Lord Jesus. All those in the building, praise God. Greetings to our visitors this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank God for Brother Max. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm also giving God thanks for Mother Pedley. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord Jesus. And for all of my beloved brothers and sisters, young and old, from wherever you come, I thank God for you and I'm glad to see you. And it's a blessing to be in the house of God today. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Let me uh, just bring to your attention just a few announcements and reminders uh, before I hand over to our Bishop Floyd Downey. In Jesus' name, praise God. First of all, praise God. I know we're all very excited. Praise the Lord Jesus. That if the Lord tarry on the 16th of November, we shall be in Mount Olivet, Manchester, in Thanksgiving service. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Looking forward to a wonderful blessing in the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Those from the Midlands who intend to go, if you haven't given me your name or your fare for the coach, then praise God, time is running out and so are the seats. Praise the Lord Jesus, so please speak to me as soon as possible in Jesus' name. The coach fare is £16, easy to remember, we're going on the 16th, and the fare is £16. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if there's anybody here today who feel like they're in trouble too much, let me remind you, Jesus is coming. Praise the Lord Jesus. I remind you, Jesus is coming. And if there's anybody here who's complacent and not serving God to the best of their ability, I remind you also that Jesus is coming. Anyone whose heart is not right with God, let me tell you, Jesus is coming. Praise the Lord Jesus. At this time, praise God. Hand over to our Bishop Floyd Downey in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hello, that man from Galilee. For he has done so very much for me. For he has taken all my sins and let the Holy Ghost come in. I love, I love that man from Galilee. I love that man from Galilee. For he has done so very much for me. He has taken all my sins. Let the Holy Ghost came in. I love, I love that man from Galilee. I love that man from Galilee. For he has done so very much for me. For he has taken all my sins and let the whole Done 
so very much for me For he has taken all my sins And let the Holy Ghost came in And I love, I love that man from Galilee I love that man from Galilee For he has done so very much for me Let's magnify Jesus. Let's magnify Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Giving God thanks again this afternoon that we can be in the house of the Lord to glorify, to magnify, and to lift up the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. There is no other name that can be lifted up above it. Praise the Lord. For there is no other name given among men whereby we can be saved. Therefore, no name can be lifted above it because no name can do what the name Jesus Christ can do for us. So when we praise him, we praise him knowing this. That he is God and King and Lord. And beside him, there is no other. Praise the name of the Lord. I give God thanks today for his goodness and his mercy towards us. I thank him that he has spared our lives to be in his house one more time. Praise God. I thank the Lord that we can come from the north and the south. Praise the Lord together in this another first Sunday. Praise God, knowing God has kept us to today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He has kept us till today. We didn't keep ourselves. Praise the Lord. We might have picked up the fork, but we didn't feed ourselves. We might have put our clothes on, but we did not clothe ourselves. But we give God thanks for the mercy of today. Today is a fresh mercy day. 
Oh, come on, church. Today is a fresh day of mercy. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful when the scripture says his mercies endureth forever. Bless be the name of the Lord. Praise God. I give God thanks. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to have an address from Elder John Nelson. And then we're going to have an address from Elder Hadley. Praise the Lord. Followed by a song from Sister Hyacinth in Jesus' name. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Elder. Shall we praise the Lord, church? Shall we praise the Lord, church? Hallelujah. Truly, I am blessed to be in the house of God one more time. Hallelujah. It's never been what I have done, but it's all because of God Almighty. Praise be to God. When I wasn't thinking about God, He was thinking about me. And that's why I was singing the song, I love that man from Galilee. Hallelujah. For He has done so very much for me. Hallelujah. You know, I. I have my sins, you have your sins, but Jesus took away our sins. Hallelujah. When we weren't even thinking about him, he took away our sins and gave us a chance of eternal life. Hallelujah. We had we were we were lost without a hope, but yet Jesus came along. Hallelujah and gave us that hope. Hallelujah. So as we go on in our daily journey, let us never forget that Jesus is the reason for everything. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you are, when you are, especially when you don't have, when you don't have to worry about where your next meal is coming from, when you're not going through certain things that other people are going through in different parts of the world, pray be God, it's so easy to get caught up in, in, in let, and let your mind take over and think things because you're not thinking about survival, now you're thinking about just anything what the devil puts in your mind. Praise be to God. Years ago, many, many years ago, people used to think about where they're going to get the next food from. But now we have food, we have supermarkets. Hallelujah. So the devil now is occupying your mind with other things, distracting you from God. Years ago, people used to be grateful when they get their food. Hallelujah. Now you have your food. Hallelujah. Your mind is so easily occupied with the things of this life. Hallelujah. So let us never forget that Jesus is the reason for everything. Pray be to God. And let us give God his glory and let us give him his praise continually. God bless you in Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Never forget. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Sometimes, you know, amongst us here, we, there's some testimonies. Bless the name of the Lord. Of people in desperate, desperate situations. Praise God. And to where God has brought them from. That, that chapter is a part of history. Oh, come on, church. That part is a part of your history. It's not your present. Oh, come on, church. Praise the Lord. Someone should be just giving God thanks right now. Didn't Psalm say, Who remembered me in my low estate? Oh, come on, church. Oh, come on, church. Because his mercy. Hallelujah. I remember speaking to someone in the week. He says things was that bad that they didn't have a toilet in their house. He had to go down the road. I've never experienced that. But some of you have. Some of you know what it's like to go to bed hungry for days. Some of you right here know what I'm talking about. 
talking about. But his mercy. You see, I know that kind of praise. I know the praise from the fat. And I know the praise from the meager. I know the praise is from those who didn't have it. And those who had a silver spoon in their mouth. I know the praise. I know your worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's magnify Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's magnify Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For those of you who have never experienced it, those of you who've never experienced it, you should be saying, thank you, Jesus, that you brought me this far, that I don't have to go through that. Those of you who've never went to bed hungry, you should be giving God thanks that I didn't have to experience that. Oh, hallelujah. I, 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 I never went to bed hungry. Never went to school barefoot. Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Praise God. We never had to choose between work and education. Like they could have gone through 
what your mothers and your fathers did. You who have a little education, could you have born that? No. That's why your mother and your father bore us. I don't think I could have done it. I don't think I could have done it. That's why God didn't give me that. But he gave it to some of you. Because you have what it took to bring you right to this very day, this very moment. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's just give God thanks and praise. Hallelujah. 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 Elder Pepe, come in Jesus' name. Greetings, fellow servants and faithful ministers of God. I am also giving God thanks for where he has brought me from. I don't think there is a day goes by when I do not reflect because I don't take the position that I am in for granted. I have made many mistakes in life. And who doesn't? Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. But you know something? He's always brought me out. Not because I am good. Not because I am great. Not because I am wonderful. Not because there's anything special about me. But you know something? Somebody prayed. And he hears and he answers the prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, I'll never forget what you have done for me. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have a song now from Tyson's Come and Sing for Sam.
concerning his promise. Praise Jesus. Praise God. I was listening to some of the testimonies and the testimonies more and more speak about the trials and the tribulations that folk are going through. Praise God. And it's, it just seems that there is an onslaught by the adversary. Praise God. And uh, I think Elder quite I uh, said so earlier on is that whilst the storm is blowing, that storm's not even dying now. Another storm is joining it. 
praise God, to, to make it even more harsh than it is. Praise God. And this time and the turmoil can really shake the very foundations because of the storm that you're going through. And it has the power, if you let it, to root up that which is already established. Praise God. Jesus said that the righteous can scarcely be saved. Praise the Lord. What would they, if they do this to the green tree? What will happen to the dry? Because guess what, brethren? The, the, the same storms that hits the green tree. Hallelujah. Oh, what if you're hearing me today, brethren? That same storm hits the dry tree. The storm that hits the strong tree is the same storm that hits the weak tree. We sometimes want to tailor the storm to suit us. But we've got to realize we've got to tailor ourselves to meet the storm that's coming. Because the storm don't wind down when it sees me. Hallelujah. The storm doesn't lose its velocity because it sees me. Praise God. The storm has the same velocity whom standing beside me as well as what's hitting me. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. That's why we've got to make sure that we are rooted and grounded. And the Bible said established in the faith. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Our roots don't just go down, but they go out to bring stability. Praise the Lord. Anything that goes straight down can be maneuvered and pulled and pushed. But something that has its roots spread out. Praise the Lord. If you was to look at it from the... Um, The engineer's perspective, he would say you have to have a counterbalance. Yeah? Something that when it has higher it gets is a counterbalance that stops it from falling over. Praise God. And that is our rooted and being established in the faith. That as we grow higher, our groups grow wider. And when the storms come, we withstand it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. I just want to um, ask you to pray for Elder Rob. He's not, being, he's not absent today, this morning anyway. So just keep in your prayers. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Um, as everyone's been talking about the hardness of this week. Again, just to confirm that those that have traveled away have all arrived safely at their journeys. Praise the Lord, so we give God thanks for journey and mercies for them to go where they're going and reach safely. Praise the Lord. Um, London, we haven't seen London yet, so even when we're here now, just keep them in your hearts. Praise the Lord. We've been hearing of how the road, we just can't determine what's on the road. Praise the Lord. Who would have known that Sister Nolly telling her husband to go and pick up some groceries? And I want it from that place in Telford. Hallelujah. And they have to be obedient. <laughs> he could have been disobedient and find a place closer to home where he knows he could get from or one similar. Hallelujah. But he was obedient to his wife. And he stayed in Telford. Yep. Mm -hmm. to up. My God, my God. You see how simple things can be, but yet be so profound in our lives? Praise the Lord. I give God thanks for his wisdom. Praise God. That it passes all understanding. Hallelujah. His, his ways aren't our ways. And some of us have said, we want to hear a voice from heaven. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes, sir. But it wasn't. No, sir. It was a still small voice. Yeah. 
It was a voice that could have been any voice. But because of the heart that he had, then he heard what was asked of him. Yeah? Because sometimes, like Naaman, when he had a he asked him to do a big thing. Ah, that's right. It's a simple thing he asked, oh, babe, in the river Jordan. Seven times. Seven times. That, it's just a simple thing. Simple thing. But you got all upset because you thought he was going to tell you to do some great act. Mm -hmm. That there are rivers by you. Where you could have bathed, but he wants you to bathe in the River Jordan seven times. Because he heard that and he did it, guess what? He received the cleanse, cleansing. If he didn't hear it, he would have been a leper until the day he died. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. We are in a time where encouragement is needed more and more. Praise, Praise the Lord. Because we're in a time where being stoic, having a stiff upper lip, as the phrase has it, is no longer around. Because there was a time where people would be strong and silent. Now folks are weak and vocal. Praise the name of the Lord. Weak and vocal. And I mean, hear what I'm saying, because I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. Is as life has become easier, people have become softer. I have to repeat myself because I want us to understand what I'm talking about. Yeah? I don't want to misunderstand me in any shape or form. When folk had very little, they were focused because I've just got to do this. I, I haven't got room for anything else. So when we talk to our Grandfathers, and if you have your great grandfathers, you ask them a simple question Have you ever been depressed? What would they say to you? They would say to you, Why you must, must depress? They would say to you, I don't understand what you mean by depression. depression. You see, because there was so little they had to do, because if they did not eat, sorry, if they did not work, they did not eat. If they did not get up and labor and pursue, they would be left behind with nothing. So they would propose in their heart and in their mind, I'm gonna have to get up and do something. And they would have the fortitude that they would not get distracted by anything else because all that they had was dependent on what they could do and what they could accomplish. So their minds was not wavering on this side and that side. Their minds were saying, I've got to get up. I've got to go out in the field. I've got to go out in the yard. I've got to go out. Because if I don't do a day's graft, I'm going to go home with nothing in my hands. Because I have the responsibility of feeding those that are around me. Whether it be earning for your family or for your, your family going upwards or your family downwards. As a male benefactor, you have to do something to earn money to get food for your home. So you have no time to focus on anything else than getting the skills and getting the money and getting the experience so that you can be able to look after those that were in your responsibility. Praise God. Praise God. So you didn't have time for depression. 
But now, depression seems to be everywhere. And I say depression is linked because you have too much time yeah. on your hands. Amen. You become so inoccupied that you're occupied now is that you get to see everything that's around you. You, have, you are depressed because you can't go here. You're depressed because you can't go there. You're depressed because you can't have this. You're depressed because you can't have that. You're depressed because you don't have enough of this. You're depressed because you don't have enough of that. And in the midst of all this not having, can't doing, and not possessing, you're sitting down just thinking about it. Mm. We are in the time now, brethren, where we must learn to occupy yes, sir. till Jesus comes. If you don't occupy yourselves till Jesus come, guess what? You are going to be depressed in an area where depression should not be. Do you know that the church should not be a place of depression? This is Liberty Hall where we are casting our cares. We should be casting all our cares on him. For he cares for us. Jesus said, look at the lilies of the valley. They toil not. Neither do they spin. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Praise God. God, let them know that this is time for you to stop worrying about tomorrow. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. I hope I'm speaking to someone today. You're too concerned about tomorrow. Amen. The birds of the air, yes. they own no land. Amen. The birds of the year here have no equipment and tools. But yet every day they get up and they fly out and forage and eat. And when they eat done, they roll away to the next day. And they get up and do the same thing. And yet our God supplies all their needs. Oh, come on, church. God supplies it. All their needs. And God loves you more than the beasts of the field. Oh, come on, church. Some of you should be giving God thanks right now. Because you should realize that the sparrows, the crows, more for you. I want to encourage you, brethren, stop fretting about tomorrow. Live for Christ today. Stop making plans for next week and next month and next year. Concentrate on this very hour. This is in your hands. Worship God. Thank Him. Give Him the glory for this moment. This is what he has delivered to you. Yes. Scripture tells us that through my worry or through my thought, I cannot add a cubit. Huh? I can't do it. I cannot apply thought. Then it manifests as an inch or two in my stature. Hallelujah. I can't by thought talk to 
my gray hair. You say, gray hair, I don't want you no more. Return to your black state. I have no power over it. Brethren, we must realize there are things that are out of our power. There are things that I cannot affect or change. Let's be the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. The song that was sung today, tell it on the mountain top. Tell it on the city street. Tell it everywhere you go. Tell it everybody you meet. Tell them Jesus is coming. I mean to tell you, brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming soon. We need to make sure now that we are keeping each other focused on the right things. Because yeah? if I don't focus on the right things, guess what? Jesus is going to come and miss me. If you notice in 2024, there are more distractions than ever before. There is now so much distractions on every side. Praise God. That makes when we were growing up seem easy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's why you oftentimes hear your parents saying, I would like to grow up in your knees. Our, our days were sweet. Remember those when you said they were, our days were sweet. Uh, my parents would tell me, oh, you're so sweet. You used to play a marble. <laughs> hmm? We used to uh, speak geek. Huh? And play jacks. And then you look at your children and say, oh, those were the good old days. And you look at them. Huh? And we hear them talk about it. But you know what they're saying to you? Life was simple. Life was so uncomplicated. It, there were no distractions. So therefore when a, a man or woman reached a certain age, they decided that they would find a trade. Come on, church. Yes, now I'm shooting a certain age, some of them don't even want to work. <laughs> Become confused or they spend years. What am I going to do? But in those days, if you did not work, you did not eat. So you very quickly found a profession. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Brethren, Jesus is coming. Just quickly turn your Bibles with me to 2 Peter chapter 3. The second Corinthians chapter 5 says, In this earthly tabernacle, if this building be dissolved, if this vessel that we call our flesh dissolves, we have another building. The God not made with hands, but is eternal, 
so so caught up with this earthly tabernacle yeah. that they more walk by sight yeah. than by faith. Yeah. Praise God, not realizing that this body is going to fail. Yeah. And it's going to fail in ways that we just don't like. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. I speak to some of my senior brethren and they tell me, oh, the pain that I'm carrying. Praise God, the feelings that they're bearing. Yep. I don't like it. If they, if they could put it down. Glory to God. They would put it down. But if you ask them, is this something that you've never seen before? They will tell you. I saw the older folks in my time. Go through exactly the same thing that I am now going through. I did not understand it then, but I understand it now. Bless be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We walk by faith, not by sight. But Jesus is coming soon. Peter had this situation in 2 Peter chapter 3. From verse 3 it says, Knowing this first that there shall come in the last day scoffers right. walking after their own lust. Praise God, they are those that are troubling you yes. as according to their own desires, mocking and make mockery of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. hey. Praise God, and they're mocking and they're Stopping is targeted to the fact that you have talked about Jesus Christ is coming. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the back in the day when we were growing up and the, 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 the messages were hell and fire and brimstone. Yes, and it was talking about the coming of Jesus Christ. And many under those preachings fled from the world. Because they did not want to go to hell that was full of fire and brimstones. Praise God. When they thought of the fact that they would not be quenched by fire. In other words, they would not burn up and then finish. But they would have a body that was prepared. That was designed for torment. Hallelujah. Just like we are getting a body designed to be with Christ. Yeah. Praise God that we should be like him. For we shall see him as he is. There's another body for all those folk that did not hear the fact of repentance. Did not believe that Jesus Christ is coming again. They are going to have a body too. That body is not going to be designed for joy and happiness and peace and tranquility. That body is going to be designed to be able to stand the heat but have to feel the pain. When Missionary Robinson spoke of the incidents at her workplace and how the, the pots of curry fell on that woman's chest. I heard everybody go, oh! Everybody did it. Because they automatically connected with the anguish of feeling the pain of being burned. Hallelujah. Imagine that you have a body that cannot be burned up but feel every flame of fire. There's no water to quench it. There's no fan to cool it. Hello, somebody. You know when you get a good burn? Don't even blow it. Huh? Don't put... When it burn. Come on, so you know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking that little burn. I'm talking about a burn that when it burned on your sweat. Huh? And even when you put water.
to earn it. It's painful to run the cold water on it. To the degree that you don't leave it, you, you put it in and put it out. Because the pain of the cold water, which is good for the bird, is causing more pain. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless be the name of the Lord God. Yeah? We're in a time where, 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 where naked flames and fires are fire guards and protected sheaths. Praise God that people don't get burned. Praise God. We have these safety mechanisms that are now in place. But there was a time when there was no safety mechanisms. Praise God, and some children had to learn the heat of fire because they got burnt. But every time you put a safety mechanism in place, you shield them from the fact of the real heat of the fire because they don't get close enough to feel the heat of the fire. But I want to remind you, brethren, about the heat of the fire of hell. You know why? Because if I don't remind you, you become complacent thinking that you can bear the burden of going to hell. Oh, come on, brethren. Let me let you into a little story. When I was younger, I was wondering, I wonder if really hell is going to be that hard. Anybody else ever wonder that? If hell is really going to be as hard. I wonder if it, you know, if, 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 if I go to hell and I cry really, really deep. Yeah? Because God hears the cries of people. But if I cry really, really deep, he might have mercy on me. Hallelujah. You see what the devil is doing? You see what he's doing? He's making in your thoughts compromise I wonder if I am able to endure hellfire I am wondering if I can call him with a sincere heart that he will hear my cry and then he will answer it and relieve my burden that I am under But the Bible said, and saying, there was, where is the promise of the coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of what? Oh, glory to God. There is a complacency. That the coming of God is not going to happen. It has been happening a long time. This is not a new message of the coming of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because if the Lord don't come, that means hell is not real. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For some, hell is not real because Jesus hasn't come. And because he has taken so long to come back, is he really coming back? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is he really coming back? Because every time I'm hearing folks speak about he's coming back again, he's coming back again, and all I see people is go they're going to him. But he's not coming to them. And there is a folk or people that are here today that are challenging the fact whether Jesus is coming. Praise God. For verse 5 says, For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God. Heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the, the water and in the water. Yes, sir. You see, they have forgotten who created all of this. Yeah. They have forgotten who was the one that commanded and it was done. Yeah. Who is the one that said, let there be light and there was light. They have forgotten who said, let the waters divide from the water. 
waters and dry land appear. You see, brethren, every time they pass laws and give new knowledge that contradicts that God created the heaven and the earth, they are plunging man into darkness. They are causing man to forget. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Forget who made heaven and earth. Forget who's spoken. Forget who rules. They want you to forget that. Because when you forget that, you will not look for the coming of the king of kings. Praise God. And by the heavens, which are now by the same word, kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Praise be to God. Let me break that down for you. Your time is not God's time. And God's time is not your time. So when men are calculating with their understanding of day and night, bring it one day, that's our time. When the Bible said the evening and the morning was the first day, that's our time. But before the morning and the evening, before the sun and the moon, God was already here. God already existed. God was already moving. God already had his being. God already existed. He existed outside of time. You see, that's why the earth gets old. You see, that's why man gets old. Because man and the earth and all that dwell in are subject to the evening and the morning. They are subject to time. But time is subject to God. Time has to answer to God. God rule time. Time don't rule God. When is God coming? In his time. God has a time. And be just reminded. A thousand years. In your time. For God. It's like an evening pass. Hallelujah. So when God's moving. In his own pace. Hallelujah. Joshua was fighting a battle. And he didn't have enough time. Praise God, so he spoke to God, who's above time, who holds time in his hands, that God, that time stands still. Hallelujah, when the scientist talks about it, they say for time to stand still, you've got to affect the entire cosmos. Praise God, the sun and the moon move in sync. Nature moves with the sun and the moon. Hallelujah. To stop that, you've got to have power. Praise the name of Jesus. That's why we serve the almighty God. Praise God. My God can stop time. Hallelujah. Didn't he say, I'm going to shorten the days for the elect's sake. It's only a God who has power can do that. It's only a God who has authority can do that. Shorten the days? Hallelujah. 
There's no man can shorten days. We have a thing in England where we set the clock back and we set the clock forward. Praise God, and some of us grateful for that one hour and vex when we lose the hour. It's the same time. Praise God, you can't put the clock back so God can't come. And you can't put the clock forward so that God comes sooner. God don't work in your time. Some of us want to get out of our problems right now. I say to you, wait on the Lord. He's got a different time scale. He's got a different movement. His clock don't tick like your clock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise, the Praise the name of the Lord. Well, when they're looking up, mm -hmm. I've seen so many folks try to predict yes. Yes. when Jesus is coming. Yes. Praise God, they have tried to use the Bible yes. as a mathematical equation. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We have some wise folk that are able to do so. Complex maths. Yes, sir. Praise God and are able to do some complex working out. Sometimes I, I did chemistry. But some of the maths equations that they use, they are mind-blowing. They write maths like they write an essay. Huh? And they try to calculate God. Huh? Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. And when you try to calculate God, you put one plus one <laughs> equal two. Praise God. And God see you get it wrong. Because I can make one plus one equal five. And you can't work it out. Because your equations are not my equations. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Hallelujah. They're trying. But you can't work out God because you were made with carnal things. You were made with temporal things. You were made from the dust of the earth. Praise God, you would not even move if God did not breathe in you. Oh, come on, church. Hallelujah. Don't you see every time they're trying to make a man and trying to make a woman. They make robots that can move. Hallelujah. They make robots that can cook. They make robots that can pull up grounds and build cars. But they can't breathe in them. That they become a living soul. Because it takes God to do that. Uh, it takes God to do that. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. You can't do it with your textbooks. You can't do it with your maths. You see, because our God took nothing. Anything that man makes, it takes what God already created. If you're saying that your God take nothing and make something and make something. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Take nothing and speak with your mouth. And say, let there be. Praise God, you can't do it. You have to take what God has already made. Hallelujah. You see, you might be able to make a chair. But you can't make the tree. That you fall into the chair. Because you can't make life. You only can take what's already there. And make it into something else. Don't be, don't be, don't let the world trick you. One day, or oh, Evelyn, is like a thousand years. Hmm? So to, to, to put it in perspective, if he was to say that 2,000 years ago Jesus Christ came on earth, 
That is two days. Yes. To God. Yes. To God. Two, day, two days. Huh? If it's equal to two days, that's not long. No, sir. Glory to God. Verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. So my brothers and sisters, God has promised. He's coming back. Hello somebody. God is coming back. It's a promise. And there's one thing about my Jesus. Oh my God. He keeps his promise. If he didn't promise you to, he doesn't have to do it. But when he makes you a promise, oh come on, church. You see, brethren, we've got to get away from our own inabilities, our, our slackness concerning promises. You see, because many men make promises, and their promises fall by the wayside. And because men fail, they put God in the same bracket as men who fail. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to remind you, brethren, I may fail you. But Jesus will not fail according to his promise. I may go back on my promise to you. But God won't do it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We see it all the time. People make faithful promises. Praise God. Some even put their hand on the Holy Bible and swear by Almighty God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Praise God. And the moment they swear is the moment they lie. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Because when they swear to tell the truth, they never came with an ounce of truth within them. Mm -hmm. But yet they swore. Praise God. And this is why you can't trust the words of men. But you can have confidence in the words of God. For the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us words, not willing that any should perish, but should all come unto repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Brethren, the day is coming. And you've got to make sure that you are ready for the coming of the Lord. The Bible calls it as a thief in the night. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. When, when, when Peter wrote this, was right to with the understanding that the cover of darkness was able to hide what was going on. The cover of darkness was able to shield people that in other means would not be shielded. Because darkness meant that I could not tell the difference between what was dark and an individual. I've heard many of those speak in the Westerns when, when darkness came down, they could not see their hands before them. That means when darkness comes, you can't tell what's real from what isn't real. Because the darkness is so thick. Praise God. So when the Bible speaks about the thief coming as a thief in the night, meant that even when you were looking, but because the darkness was so thick, you would not be able to see the thief coming because darkness would hide them. You see, we're in a time where sin is so thick that it's hiding the covering of the Lord. But believe, brethren, the Lord is coming. The world has become so dark with yes. sin yes. that when you are looking for the coming of the Lord, you can't see it because the time and the season is so dark and dingy. But the Bible said we must prepare for the breaking of the thief. It means that you don't have to see him to prepare for him. You don't have to see him to prepare for him. Because you are 
conscious that the thief is going to come. Why? Because it's night. So because it's night, there is no cover of darkness. That's why they call darkness a covering. The covering of darkness. You are able to be able to maneuver because darkness is your ally. Hallelujah. Sin brings darkness. And the devil is using sin as the ally to cover that God is coming back. So because the world is in darkness, it cannot see Jesus coming because darkness covers his coming. Hallelujah. But you who know that the thief strikes at night, you now put up watch because you know this is the time when the thieves want to break in. You don't know whether it's coming through the top window, the back window. You don't know whether it's coming from the side. You don't know where it's coming in, but you know because of the fall of night. There are some animals that only feed at night yes, sir. Yes. because they use darkness as a way to get close to their prey and strike. The devil loves darkness because that's his ally in order to get close to you. So we see in the Garden of Eden, the snake, which we know camouflages itself. Yes? But there are other animals that use darkness. Mm -hmm. And when darkness comes down, the owl yeah. is one of the most yeah. lethal nighttime predators. Yes. Yes, sir. The owl, when it flaps its wings, makes no sound. It makes no sound. So that means even when it's coming towards you, you don't hear its arrival. Because it's mastered darkness. And able to use it because your eyes are no good when darkness is around. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you have eyes in this darkness, they can do one thing for you. Hmm? Darkness and eyes don't agree. Because mm -hmm. darkness and eyes cannot work together. Once your eyes are dark, you can't see. So the Bible says, But that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in that which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversations and godliness? It says, looking for the hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat nevertheless nevertheless we according to his promise hallelujah brethren you see for those that are in Christ the melting of the heavens of the earth is not a problem Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth the righteousness. Wherefore, my beloved, seeing that he look for such things, be diligent that he may be found in him peace without spot and blame is according that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. He 
even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you blessed be the name of the Lord let us ready ourselves let us ready ourselves for his coming soon just in case you're not sure about getting ready Ephesians said that you must put on Hallelujah. Put on the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. We're in a time where there is more CCTV and camera around than ever before. Because everybody are watching and double watch and triple watch. Some of us security systems are so good that we can be in another country. And they get alert. And tell you to, that someone is approaching your door. And you can talk to them from another side of the world. And tell them to leave the package behind the bin. And come and get it later. Because folk are watching. And making sure that no one can come on their property. And do as they please so they have made. Praise God the necessary adjustments. So that they cannot be taken unawares. So my brothers and sisters, I'm here to let you know that if you're preparing for the coming of the Lord, if you're preparing for him to break the clouds, you've got to make sure you've got the right resources in place. Praise God. So I'm here to tell you that if you're ready waiting for the coming of the Lord, praise God, don't get too complacent. You make sure you're ready. If you're not ready, get yourselves ready. The Bible said that you must put on the whole armor of God. It's time to get dressed up for the coming of the Lord. It's time to get dressed up. For the coming of the Lord. You dress up when your friends come. You dress up when you go out with your friends. You dress up when you're going to celebrate. It's time to dress up. Because Jesus is coming. It's time to dress up. Because you're going to meet the King of Kings. It's time to dress up. Because you're going to meet the Lord of Lords. I don't want you to come undressed. But dress up to meet Jesus. Some of you buy the most expensive ties and the most expensive suits and the most expensive shoes. Some of you got dresses upon dresses trying to look your best. I'm here to tell you, if you're going to meet Jesus, forget about your hat. Forget about your skirt. Forget about your trousers. Forget about your tie. It's time to put on the old armor. Hallelujah. It's time to dress up according to God's dress code. He don't want you to be unready, but he wants you to be ready. Dress up ready to meet Jesus.
There was a design to protect you and ready you for inspection. You know the coming of the Lord is just that. It's just an inspection. That's all it is. Are you going to pass the inspection? I used to watch those little army film. And when one of those soldiers did not have their tie tie straight, he said, drop on the floor. Give me 50 pressures. Or they would say, everybody in the barracks, go and run a five mile. Because the, they failed the inspection. So I am here today trying to ready you. Because there's coming a time there for an inspection. Praise God. You may say, boy, that bishop in picky bud. Every little thing in picking up. In don't let nothing slide. Brethren, I can let it all slide. But there's one that's not going to let it slide. When he sees and look at you, if you're not ready, tell him, say, Bishop, say. Tell him, say, Pastor, say. Tell him, say, Elder, say. He's going to tell you, I am the Lord, your God. I am the one you serve. Of salvation you got to put it on your head you see because your mind must realize that you have been saved from grace saved from sin he has paid the price of redemption praise God because whom the son of God the son of man is set free so you have to be free up here you see because some of you the devil's got you up here because he's kept you in darkness up here it's kept you trapped up here. But when God frees you, he gives you the helmet of salvation. That you wear it. That you say, beloved, beloved, now are we the sons of God. I've been, I've been given salvation. I was on the outside. But God has brought me inside. I've got salvation because I was lowly connected. But God has connected me. Realize it's a fake. 
it's a counterfeit but it's able to fool the naked eye some of you have unrighteousness but it's not God's righteousness because in the time of trouble that will not be able to suffice you it won't be able to keep you it won't be able to protect you because it's not God's righteousness it's not God's protection put down your own armor put down your own sword put down your own shield and take up what God has designed for you We're in a world full of fake. Yes, sir. And you know what happened now? Some people prefer fake than the real thing. Let me tell you something. What is this? Let me try and tap into people's thought process. If I buy the fake that look like the real thing, guess what? It's cheap. The real Michael cost back cost nearly 500 pounds. This one we get from the market 15 pounds. Huh? And when we, when we have it and we use it, don't come too close. It's not designed for inspection. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. I don't want to come too close because it's not designed for close up inspection. No. Don't touch it. Huh? Don't ask me to have a look at it. Because I know that under scrutiny, some may know what the real one is. So when you put on the Louis Vuitton bag and you wear it, you move fast. Why? I don't want no inspection. Why do you think God told Moses, stand still? Stop your moving around, stand still. Because when you stand still, I will show them your salvation. When you use counterfeit, you can't put it under pressure. You put on the breastplate of righteousness. If you don't put on the right righteousness, when you get attacked from the enemy, it will break. Huh? And I told that to you again. The righteous breastplate is not just to protect what's coming in but it has a dual purpose because the Bible says the heart is the most deceitful thing but if I cover my heart with righteousness it will transform my deceitful heart into a heart like God but I have to use the breastplate that God said some of you used to wear a ring. Hello. And the green looked gold. But when it was the false gold, it left the finger black. You remember? Give me an amen. You, you, you remember? Huh? It looked good. But how you know it wasn't gold after a while? Your finger get black. You see, brethren, I am giving you something that you will be able to stand the test. That when your heart is stirring up within you, righteousness hold it in place. Righteousness hold my heart in place. Because I've got the breastplate of God's righteousness on me. Listen, don't you hear the testimony of some folk? Make you and catch me last year. Huh? 
Make it meet me five years ago. Me never have on this. This breastplate of righteousness, I didn't wear it. But now that I've met that man, Christ Jesus, I put it on. Then the Bible speaks about having your loins girt about you. With what? With what? You see, brethren, truth is a part of your armor. Anyone don't like truth, you are not dressed for this. Truth is a part of your dress. Any of you don't like truth, you are naked. And you are not having on the whole armor. The truth is about your loins. Huh? You know why it protects your loins? Your loins is a place where you can die, but a slow death. Hmm? So you protect that which can die slowly. So you put on truth. Have you not noticed that when a person is injured in a pouch or have a knife's wound, they put on something called a tourniquet. Yes, sir. And what does it do? It binds up. Hallelujah. Huh? It binds you up so that the wound that you receive, you are able to survive yes, yes. until you get the right help. Yes, oh, come on, church. You see, sometimes we have to learn to survive until we get the healing that we need to move forward. And what allows us to survive is truth. Oh, come on, church. Don't you know that sometimes the truth, even though it hurts, is what will help us to survive going forward. Truth don't kill. Truth saves if it's God's truth. Oh, Bishop, I know what you're saying, but truth condemns. Yes, it does. But the Bible says, if this hand is troubling me, talk truth to it. You are hindering me. You are stopping me. So what do I do? I cut it off. The truth of the matter is, it hurts. The truth of the matter is, I'm losing something that's mine. But the truth of the matter is, if I do it, I save my body. So when you are aligned with truth, Truth will stand no matter what. Truth is not always on your side. Because guess what? Even though you're receiving help. Remember we spoke about someone getting burned? And the doctor is helping you? Let me see the doctor help you and you don't cry of pain. Huh? But the doctor is helping you. But the pain is from what's happening, but the doctor is still helping you. He might be able to administer some kind of medication to take off the edge of the pain. And even if it takes off for a while, the real pain comes back later on. Because that which you are going through is painful. Hallelujah. Huh? The Bible then goes on to say what? The feet shod or covered with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Praise the Lord. Now, what we have, we need to walk with it. Because this peace that we have is from having on the whole armor of God. Because when I have on the helmet, the breastplate, praise God, my loins girt about me, 
I'm now getting myself clothed up. But let me go backtrack a little before I go to the feet. The Bible speaks about the shield. Huh? Shield of faith. Shield. 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 Hallelujah. Don't you know, brethren, that your protection is called faith? Yes, praise God. The shield is not something that's an off offensive weapon. It's a defensive weapon. The sword is an offensive weapon. The shield is a defensive weapon. Hallelujah. Some of you may feel that you're on the back foot. It's time to lift up your shield. You need to have the proper defense. Hallelujah. Huh? Your defense is not your moaning and your groaning and your whining. That's not your, that's not your shield. Your shield is faith that God is able to do what he said he's going to do. My God will deliver because he's a delivering God. My God's a way maker because he said he's going to make a way. Because my God will do what he said he will do. Didn't Hebrews say, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things. Hold it, hold it, hold it. That means your shield is invisible. Your shield is invisible to the naked eye. It's not visible to the naked eye because the shield of faith is not seen because what you see you don't hope for oh come on church but your faith is not seen but yet it has the power as if it was seen you remember those signs beware of the dog how many were afraid to go down that road when he said beware of the dog Huh? Some of them didn't even have no dog. Huh? But the fact that he said beware of dog. You were scared to go down there. Some of you when you went down there. You heard this big rough dog barking. It make you quiver with pain. Then when they open the front door, it's one of the something. He said, my God, is that what I was scared of? Brethren, when you add faith to your arsenal, the devil does not know what to do with you when you have faith. Because he doesn't know how big your faith is. Praise God, because it's not visible to the naked eye. It's to my belief and trust in God that as I believe God, my faith keeps me and protects me. That's why the devil's trying to destroy your faith. If I destroy your faith, I destroy your defense. If I destroy your defense, I can attack you. I can pull you. I can push you. I can kick you down. I can stomp on you. But if I have some faith, if I stand on the promises of God, even though he knocks me down, my faith will rise me up again. Even though he may put me in a horrible pit, I will not suffer. I will not cry. But I will look unto the hills from where it's come my help. I have confidence. I've got confidence. I've got confidence. I've got confidence. I've got confidence that God, that God, that God will deliver me.
So now, my feet are prepared with the gospel. I got faith in that which God has given me. My mind has been circumspect because I have on the helmet of salvation. Praise God. And now I've got the, the sword. Praise the Lord. Which demonstrates my power to strike. Praise the Lord. You see, now it's a weapon. Yeah, it's a weapon now. I've been weaponized by having on the armor of God. You can't just see me as a pushover now. Because you would have saw me with my armor that wasn't fully dressed. But when I'm fully dressed, you will see that I'm ready to defend, but also ready to attack. Praise the Lord. And I have the ability that you might strike me, but I've got protection. So you might get through my shield, and you might strike my chest, but I've got on the breastplate of righteousness. You may be able to throw stones at my head, but I've got the helmet of salvation. You may to try to get me in my loins, but I've got truth about me. Hallelujah. So I can run this race with patience. I can lay hold on eternal life. Brethren, I've been designed to be a winner. I've been designed to overcome. I've been designed to be the head and not the tail. I've been designed to be a winner and not a loser. I've been designed to overcome the enemy. I've been designed to be first and not last. I am a design of God. You can't beat me now. I've got God's design. Come with your sticks. Come with your stones. I've got the armor of God. Step on my foot. Me got two tekka boots. Huh? When you go to some factory, you have to have steel two cap boots. Because something can drop on your foot. My foot has been prepared by God. Drop what you want on my foot. It's not going to damage me. Because God has got my foot under protection. Oh, hallelujah. Psalms 23 said, Yay! Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, I, I will fear no evil. No evil. Thank you, 
Jesus.
Jesus. Bless your people right now, Father. I pray, mighty God, that we will apply your word to our hearts, to our daily lives, Father, that, Lord, we will be better Christians, Father. Lord, bless your people right now as we are about to dismiss, Lord Jesus. Remember those who are not here, oh God, for whatever reason, Lord, touch them, touch their mind, touch their spirit, mighty God, I pray. Some is locked up in prison, but I pray that you might release them now. Now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Locked up mighty God. But I pray you might break the prison bar. Shanda Bosanda Mohinde. Set your people free now. Freedom in their minds. Freedom in your spirit. Oh God in the name of Jesus Christ. As you said in your word for who the son set free. Is free indeed. Bless us now, Father, as we dismiss now. And if you will, Lord, to bring us back again to give you the glory and to give you the praise. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior. To him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>